Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,343. Today on Cars Yeah, we're celebrating the 7th annual Carmel Mission Classic that takes place on Wednesday, August 14th at the Carmel Mission in Carmel-by-the-Sea during the Monterey Pebble Beach Car Week. For more information, go to thecarmelmissionclassic.org. And I'll see you there. Never quit. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, calling in from Anaheim, California, Mike. Vietro. Hey, Mike, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Not only am I buckled up, I'm doing so in a 1967 Camaro official pace car. <laughs> this is very cool. All right, we're going to have some fun today. I know it. Mike Vietro, a.k.a. Corvette Mike, founded Corvette Mike in 1982. And over the decades, he has earned a reputation of unsurpassed integrity and expertise while becoming one of the world's leading classic and sports car dealers. Mike is known as the leader of the pack in dealing in Corvettes, classics, and American muscle cars, as well as exotic imports, including Ferrari, Porsche, and Jaguar, just to name a few. Corvette Mike is your one-step shop for your classic car collection and sports car needs. So, Mike, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment and share a little bit more about your business and a very obvious passion that you have for automobiles? Oh, the passion actually dates back to when I just got out of the military back in 1978. And as I got out of the service, the Marine Corps here in Southern California, that's what brought me here from my hometown of Boston. My dream as a child and into my teenage years while I was pumping gas was to one day own a Corvette. That was like a dream come true, that in July 6, 1978, leaving the dealership known as Harry Mann Chevrolet in Los Angeles, I was behind the wheel for the first time in my life behind a 25th anniversary Corvette. Cool. You know, I love the way this begins. And first and foremost, Mike, oorah, thank you for your service to the Marine Corps. My father-in-law was a 33-year Marine, very special branch of the services in my life. So I really appreciate your service to this country. As we continue on your journey, though, I always like to start with a success quote. This is some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. It's a really nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah. So Mike, take the wheel. Well, as we were training in boot camp, our mantra and our motto, thing we had to put foremost in front of our brain every day was never quit. (laughs) Yes, the Marine Corps motto. Well, let me move that forward a little bit past your service days. You never quit dreaming about owning that Corvette. You got it. But how do you apply that to your business on a day-to-day basis? Well, I always say that because of what I'm doing and the passion that I've always had for Corvettes, this job, I always thought to myself in the early days, I wonder what I'm going to do next year, because this was like I mentioned, a dream come true. So because of that, I never really felt like I worked a day in my life. However, running a business is not the same thing as having a passion about owning any type of car that you, I guess, lust after. So I have to apply those same principles that I learned in boot camp and throughout my career. And because of that, I use that same motto, never quit daily, because we are faced with challenges in this world today, especially in a retail environment like, you know, a dealership where people come in and you have all of these clients with all different needs and, you know, aspirations and maybe some, some of their, search engines are unrealistic where, you know, they want something. They think it's like 1962 all over again. And they want to order that, you know, almond beige 1962 Corvette with fawn interior with a 340 <laughs> horsepower. Yeah. And 
it's like, okay, well, let's go back in time and go to the used car ordering department and let's get that car ordered up for you. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there are many challenges while you're in business, but I believe that the overall outcome of what you do daily in my business, you know, far exceeds the challenges that it also brings you know, to the forefront. Absolutely. Very well said. Well, let's talk about a little story in your life that instigated this passion you have for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were indeed going to be a car guy? Well, actually, not in the early years and not even after I bought that first Corvette, because as I mentioned, you know, I always wanted one as a teenager. And the reason that I fell in love with Corvettes was because I worked in a gas station with my dad back east, and I was pumping gas part-time with him. And during the nice months, which, you know, back in New England, it's going to snow and rain and do all of its nasty things, you only got a small segment, you know, let's say between April and September, where the guys actually bring the cars out and enjoy them. And I would pump gas. And it was full service at the time. So not only did you pump that gas, but you cleaned the windshield and you checked the oil. Okay. So, yes, there's no coverings over your head. I mean, you're out in the elements. It's raining. It's snowing. It's freezing. But in those summer months when they came in and I would see those stingrays come in the door, those 63 split windows and those 65 big blocks and God knows what else I must have seen back then when I was 15 years old. That's when I fell in love. And, you know, when I started to pump gas in these guys' cars, depending on how specific they were about their love for their Corvette, they would sometimes jump out of the car and say, hold on, kid, hold on, let me do that. And I said, oh, no, 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 this is something that, you know, I have a true love for. I am not going to mess up your car. And they would see how careful I was with that pump nozzle to get it in that big filler tank in the back of the car and, they would go, wow, you really are very careful. Thank you for doing that. And I said, oh, one day I'm going to have one of these cars. <laughs> and the guy gave me the $5 bill, you know, for 20 gallons of gas. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, kid, well, we'll see you later. Keep on dreaming. And off they would go. And, you know, I just kept saying to myself one day if it's at all possible i'm gonna have one of those cars yeah never quit so, on that dream yeah <laughs> Very nicely yep, never done quit. never quit well yep. let's talk about never quitting i want to talk about a challenge or even a big failure you faced along the way in your business your career or your life whatever you want to touch on here but the most important thing about this is what was the lesson learned? So walk us through an experience that was particularly maybe painful, but tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career, in your business, in your life. Well, when I started my business back in the early 80s, I didn't have any money, okay? It wasn't like, you know, I was given this business from my dad who started it 20 years earlier or that I won the lottery and I was able to fulfill a dream and start car dealership. So every day was a huge challenge. I had to find money to buy cars. So in doing so, what I did was I called, back then, you know, cars were advertised in newspapers, the Orange County Register and the Los Angeles Times and the Penny Saver. I remember the Penny Saver, yeah. <laughs> The penny saver. We didn't have all of this sophisticated search engines where you can find just about anything you want right now. So by using these newspapers, I would get them every morning around six o'clock, go out to the, you know, the driveway, pick them up, open them up to the Corvette section and start circling ads that I would call on. And when I called these people, I'd talk about their car and we would talk about, you know, trying to figure out a way to get it bought. And then I would offer things like consignment. You know, would you be interested in letting me sell your car for you? And you got to remember what, when you first start any business, people are going to be skeptical. So finding inventory and being able to pay for it and or consign it was that challenge. It was huge because, you know, maybe I had, well, keep in mind in the late seventies, you could pretty much buy any used Corvette for anywhere between $2,500 and $7,500 for a used Corvette. And I'm talking about Stingrays now, okay? 
I'm talking about a 67 big block Corvette for eight grand, all right? But eight grand was a lot of money. And a brand new Corvette at the time, like let's say a 78 pace car that just came out, those cars brand new were 13 grand. Yeah, a lot of so money in 78. A lot of money. And I'll tell you how much money it was. We'll talk about another challenge here. My house payment that myself and another Marine purchased a condo in the city of Orange along with my wife, who was working in a car wash, making $2 an hour while she was going to Cal State Long Beach. And I was going to Cal State Pomona Polytechnical. And Steve, my buddy, was still in the Marines. Our whole condo payment back then was $434. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My first Corvette payment that I drove out of Harry Man Chevrolet with minimum down payment was three hundred and thirteen dollars a month yeah sure now to put that into perspective 2019 okay that'd be the equivalent of having a house payment of forty three hundred dollars a month and a car payment of three thousand one hundred dollars a month yeah okay sure yep so that's what you call passion yeah and that's what you call <laughs> never quit i made every one of those 48 payments you know in succession without a late payment for four years. Yeah, 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 different times, but still is challenging. Yeah, but that still didn't get me the inventory I needed to sell cars on a daily basis. So my biggest challenge was I want to be Corvette Mike. I want to have a dealership. I want to be able to buy and sell Corvettes and sell on consignment. And in the early days, that was my biggest challenge was inventory. Yeah, no doubt. Boy, well. It's not unlike most businesses. It's capital. And if you're starting a business, you got to start small. You got to build up. I think it was ingenious of you to think about consigning cars. That's a great way to do it so you don't have to tie money up and help people. Because one of the things people don't like doing is selling their cars. Not much fun for most people to have strangers come into your house and driving your car and kicking their tires and saying, oh, yeah, I'll be back. And they never show up. So uh, nicely done. Well, let's have a little bit of fun. You kind of probably already answered this question. I like to ask my guests about their first really special vehicle and a memory they have about that ride. Is it that first Corvette or was there another car that came along later that was even more special for you? Well, Mark, I got to tell you, I think I've owned, bought and sold over 10,000 Corvettes. Oh my gosh. Well, that's why I say the word first, because otherwise we'd be talking all day about special vehicles. So I want you to go back in time a little bit. <laughs> and I have some awesome, amazing, very, you know, exciting car stories that I could share with you at another time that we could chat about for many hours. But I have to say that that first Corvette, I can still see myself leaving Los Angeles at Slauson and Crenshaw. Okay. Not a great part of town by any means. They sold me this Corvette. It was brand spanking new. And I never even got a test drive. I paid for the car. I brought up my bank loan note to the dealer. I gave it to him. And I'm behind the wheel of this car driving back to Orange County. And I'm saying to myself, wow. what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I never looked back. Never once looked back. I made that payment before my house payment. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Now, for us passionate car people, I get that. Well, I always ask my guests about a seller's remorse story. And in your case, let's not put money into this equation because it's easy to say, wish I hadn't sold that thing that now is worth this. Instead, I want you to think about a vehicle that maybe has lingered in your brain that you wish you'd kept for yourself. Is there, is, there's probably a hundred if you sold 10,000 cars. But is there one that you could maybe just stands out today that you go, I always think back about that car? Well, there are a couple like that I truly miss. And I tell myself that, you know, one day before I, you know, retire or whatever I'm going to end up doing, I would like to own that car back again. Okay. First one that comes to mind is a 1965 Corvette convertible, factory red with white leather it was a 327, 350 horsepower car with factory air conditioning. And 
I drove up to Bakersfield, California. I believe the car was sold new in Lancaster. And I drove up to Bakersfield, and somebody probably gave me a ride. And I remember meeting the owner of the car. This was back in 19, let's say, 83. And looking over the car, it was beautiful, of course. And I opened up the glove box, and there's the original window sticker in the glove box. And I thought, how cool is this? An original California car, red with white leather, red carpet, red dash, factory air condition, convertible. Okay? That car is so rare, even today, that I have continued to lust after that car as I have sold it five times since 1983. Oh, my gosh. Five times? Wow. Five times. Every time I sell that car, I insist that the new owner signs a document that says, I get the car back should you ever sell it, okay? And I always have to sell it to pay the rent or to pay the bills or to do this or do that or buy some other car. So one day, that's the car that I would truly like to buy back and not have to sell for business purposes. Yeah, first rights or refusal. Well, that's smart of you to do that. I have no doubt, Mike, that's going to happen someday. I think that's a great story. Well, I want to talk about today and what has you excited and fired up. There's a couple of things I know about you, Mike, because we chatted before we connected on this show here. You just received a very, very special award, and I want you to talk about that. And also, I want you to share with my listeners a little bit more about your business, what people could expect when they come visit you or see you online, and they're looking for a very special car. But let's start with this. I believe it's called the Duntov Award, right? Yes, the Duntov Mark of Excellence Award is one of the most difficult awards that the National Corvette Restorer Society, NCRS, has offered to their members, which upon receiving will be a minimum of at least three different individual judgings. They must be done at the regional or national levels where they have the very seasoned judges from around the country. And this three-part examination or test, if you will, consists of your first judging, which you have to get a minimum of 97% to factory standards. If you're able to achieve that, you move on to another regional whereby you have to take a performance verification test. Now, Nobody else does a performance verification test to the likes of NCRS, which includes four pages of pass-fail. Now, pass-fail means you fail one item, you go home. So, and it as critical as they pull the cigarette lighter out of the receptacle in the dash, and inside is this small, tiny little light bulb. So should you need that cigarette lighter? You know, back in the day when it was evening, and you light up your cigar as you drive your 67 Corvette down the road. And to find that hole, guess what? You need a little bit of light. If that bulb is burnt out, they give you 15 minutes to fix one item. And if you can't fix that item, and you just trailered your car all the way to Frisco, Texas from Anaheim, California, they politely say, well, thanks, but you're going to have to go home now. The lights just went out on your win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Pretty serious yes. deal. So, yeah. And not only does it include those types of functions needing to work properly as built and as designed, but after you get all of this car from front to back, top to bottom, inspected with that scrutiny, then you get to go on a 12-mile drive with the judge, and he is checking every single thing while you're driving. Things like, hey, is that rearview mirror looks like it loose. Is that actually coming, falling down? Hmm, that's not good. What about that? rear end noise, that wheel bearing noise, that transmission whine. Is that carburetor a little flat? Do I hear a misfire? Boy, that radio sure doesn't work well on this drive. Any one of those, you go home. Okay? So you are, you're not done until you're done. Okay? That's part of the Duntoff judging examination. 
And then if you get through that performance verification, and we were talking at the hotel this past week where we were in Greenville, South Carolina, and one of the guys there at the dinner mentioned, well, you know, I took that performance verification, PV as they call it, five times and I've never passed it. No, it's so difficult, Mark. I can't even explain it to you. You have to be there in person. It gives most people the shakes. And if you get to pass that, you move on to the national event, which is where I was last week. And you get to go for judging one last time. And again, you must score a 97 or better. And if you do, those three are the minimum number of times for the judging to take place. You can do multiple judgings to get that 97, multiple times to get the performance verification, and multiple times at the national to again get the 97, but three is the minimum. Then you get awarded this beautiful plaque, Guntoff Mark of Excellence Award, and trust me, it is so well received and cherished that it's like no other award that you can get in the country. And no it's doubt. that difficult. Well, congratulations. And the car we're talking about, listeners, is a 67 Corvette L88, one of the original 20 built for exclusive racers, correct? That's correct. Now, you know, when you're talking about the rarity of a 1967 L88 Corvette to start off with, that's the holy grail as far as collectors, because they only made 20. There's only maybe 12 or 13 that are even known to exist. But of that 12 or 13, there's only three two convertibles in one coupe that still retain its original engine from the factory. Now, think about these were 12 and a half to one compression 427s. They were 560 plus factory horsepower and they were made to race. And they did race, and they competed, and they competed well, including one that actually ran Le Mans in 1967. Okay? Yes, very rare cars. The likes of, like, Dick Goldstrand and Dr. Dick Thompson, the Flying Dentist, and Dan Gurney, and the guys of that era that raced these cars, Doug Hooper and Dave McDonald, all those guys. Those were the guys that Chevrolet wanted to put these cars in the hands of. They didn't, these cars were not advertised. In fact, in fact, if you went to the order sheet, the spec sheet, and ordered a 1967 Corvette, and you had your choice of four different 427 options and horsepowers, okay, this car was actually rated from GM at 430 horsepower five horsepower less than the 435, the tricarb 67 solid lifter motor. Now, why would you pay a thousand dollars for that engine and only get 430 horse versus the cheaper engine with 435 horse? Well, they rated it at a much lower RPM purposely to discourage anybody from buying it because the car was not for, it wasn't for street use. It didn't even have a fan shroud, Mark, so you couldn't even drive it on the street anyways. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it was made to race. They, Yes, it was made to race, and they discouraged the average guy from ordering one. However, this particular car found its way brand new to S&K Chevrolet in uh, Visalia, California, believe it or not. And the story goes that Bob Baker, the original owner, who this car is still titled to, by the way, I mean the original title in Bob Baker's name, traded in his 66 Corvette 427, plus whatever the additional cash was, because he wanted to go drag racing, and this car was outfitted with a 456 rear end, okay? And drag racing, he went. The car, the car is an amazing story. It's Sunfire Yellow, black interior, fastback coupe, retaining its original motor, and now the only one in the world that has achieved the Duntoff Mark of Excellence Award with its original engine on top of it. Wow, amazing story. Well, congratulations. Well-deserved, incredible story. What would our listeners experience when they come to see Corvette Mike and look at the cars and the inventory you have to offer them? Well, we have a very nice enclosed 
15,000 square foot building in Anaheim on a major boulevard, Tustin Avenue. And when, as soon as they walk in the door, they know that they have found, you know, Corvette heaven. And when you walk in that door, there's always a fabulous Corvette, highly certified, judged, highly documented example that sits amongst the sales cubicles. So when people walk in the door, that's the first thing they see. And then you open up into double glass doors into the showroom, which houses about 40 to 45 Corvettes and various muscle cars. And then into a service department, which services more Corvettes in Southern California than any other individual shop with the team of Corvette technicians that have been with me as long as 37 years. Wow. Very cool. Very impressive. That's what you see when you walk in the door. Nice. Nice. You've got a great website. Listeners, I'll make sure to put a link to that website on Mike's show notes page. And before we jump to the next question, I want to talk about your involvement with past cars. Yeah, I guess Frank DiPaola and Rich Pepe, both involved in the Carmel Mission Classic, coming up here in a couple weeks during Pebble Beach Car Week. It's on the 14th of August. Uh, absolutely unique, wonderful event. And you've been tied into that in uh, a variety of ways. I know you're good friends with those guys. So tell our listeners what they could expect to experience at the Carmel Mission Classic. Well, Carmel Monterey Week in the Monterey Peninsula, usually the second or third week of the month in August, starts basically on a Tuesday now with the Concours on the Avenue in downtown Carmel. The next day, Wednesday, Frank DiPaolo and Pepe started what is referred to as the Carmel Mission Classic. That show is held at the actual Carmel Mission, the one founded by the monks in the early days of California settlement. It is a picturesque location behind the walls of the mission, and it's limited to just a select few of invited cars and guests. And it's an all-inclusive type event, so you pay to get in there, and they treat you to a nice lunch and maybe a glass of wine as you stroll amongst the cars and the gardens and the different avenues of the mission where you're back in time. And it's relaxing. It's one of my wife's favorite car shows, and she enjoys going to that one probably even more than being on the lawn at Pebble on Sunday. It's a very intimate seen there and what's cool is it's in a i think it's a 400 plus year old mission which is pretty darn cool i think it's great i'll be there of course you'll be there so we'll get to uh talk a little bit about some of these corvettes in your lives and and real quickly you mentioned carmel concord and the avenue doug friedman is another past guest here he's the the gentleman who runs that event which starts on tuesday it's a great way to launch car week and then dive into the carmel mission classic you can learn more about carmel mission classic at carmelmissionclassic.org i encourage you if you're there during car week or come in a day early if you typically fly in on thursday it's worth the extra day really fun event mike up next is the last lap before we put the pedal to the metal let's say thank you to today's cars yeah sponsors do you know the best way to protect your vehicle both the exterior and the interior is with a car cover. I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom-made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, 
thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at carsyeah.com. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah! Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah! TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah! podcast guests and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah! TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah! TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, Mike, I have a very introspective question for you here. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, actually manifested into a car, what would Mike be and why? That's a question I've never been asked. <laughs> Well, good. It makes me smile when I ask questions that people haven't had to think about. Yeah, that was a little bit interreflective, I guess. Introspective is a better word. Well, let me try and answer that the best I can. I mentioned to you about the numbers of cars and Corvettes and classics that I've sold over the years. And one car really stands out. And it's a car that I still currently own and I will be showing on the avenue in Carmel on Tuesday with Doug Friedman. In fact, he even mentioned, boy, I've never even seen one of those. Now, what this car is, and it's not that unusual, because everybody's heard the term Corvette split window, an icon, an American icon automobile. But this particular car that I would probably like to be reincarnated into is a factory black on black, original owner, 340 horsepower, that I also received the Duntoff Award with last July and has been the all-time favorite car of mine so far back that I can remember. And it's not just because it's, you know, a 63 window, but it's extremely rare. And Doug had never seen a factory black one, which in itself is a rare entity. And when you look into the Corvette books that have been published, there are numbers that are reflected for red cars and white cars and Daytona blue cars, but nobody knows for sure how many black ones they actually built. And it has never been published by general motors or anybody else, including like Michael Antonick's black book. So that, that in itself isn't that big of a deal. A black Corvettes of the sixties are very rare. It doesn't matter what year it is. A 64 in black is very rare as well as a 67 in black where they only made 815 cars out of a total of 23,000 Corvettes. Think about that, 815, okay? So black is extremely rare in the 60s because it was earth tone colors back then, okay? Your beiges, your tans, your browns, your greens, your yellows, okay? So, but I bought this car from the original owner I helped him back in the early 80s with the car, restoring it, keeping it running. And he eventually passed away, and I got it from the widow. And I got it on a very milestone year for Corvettes. The car was 50 years old in 2013, and the family wanted to keep it in honor of their dad when it became 50 years old. And then I got it subsequently after that. So that car I've had since 2013, it's 2019, and in the world of Corvette dealers, that is unheard of. So I think that's how I would like to come back, should I have the opportunity. (laughs) If they give me a pick, do I want to be a gazelle or a giraffe or a car? I guess I would would say a 63 split window. I would expect nothing else. All right, Mike, we are entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners a quick blip of that 63 Corvette throttle. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? I guess keep the pedal to the metal. (laughs) There you go. I like it. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? Praying. Praying. Yeah, absolutely. How about a resource? Is there one that you'd like to share with our listeners? 
I am the resource. You are the resource. Corvette Mike. I like it. <laughs> there you go. That's a good answer. How about if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would that be? My mentor, Zora Arcus Duntoff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I kind of figured that's who that would be. Now, how about a book, Mike? Is there a book you've read that you could share with our listeners you think they would enjoy? Unbroken. Oh, yeah. Is that the book they made the movie out of? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great book. Absolutely. I'll remind our listeners you can find all these great resources Mike has been so good to share with us today on his very own Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Mike Vietro, V-I-E-T-R-O, and that page will pop right up. Mike, we're up to the last question here, and it can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you a very cool collector car. Any car on the planet that exists, I'm going to park it in your garage. But there are a couple rules that may make this a bit of a challenge. One is, it's the only car you can have parked in your garage. The only collector car you can have. Two, you have to drive it. No garage queens allowed here. I want you to get out and enjoy this thing. And three is, you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. So what's it going to be? Does the car have to be a production car that's known today? Any car on the planet, and it's yours. Or maybe you want somebody to make it for you. There you go. That's a twist. Yeah, I always thought that, you know, Corvette should evolve. Like, I liken it to the Porsche sports car, where they now have a four-door Panamera, and they have a four-door SUV, and then they still have the sports car. I think Corvette would be a perfect platform to come out with that. And I'd like to have a four-door Corvette. A f okay. So you want something in the future or something custom-built, a four-door Corvette. Now, that is a unique answer. That's probably the only, in fact, I know it's the only time anyone's answered that question that way. Okay, so I'm going to have to go find a builder, and I know a lot of them. I've interviewed hundreds of fabricators and builders who could do this for us. So uh, I'll get to work. This is going to be an interesting one, Mike. I knew this was going to be a unique answer from you, but you kind of threw me a curve. But that's okay. I love it. Mike, you've taken me on a great ride today. I knew we would. It's been fun riding. Funny that we've been riding in a Camaro today, not a Corvette, but that's okay. Still a Chevrolet, still a great car. Really enjoyed your stories. Want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that four-door Corvette? Stay focused and buy that car of your dreams. I like it. And what's the best way for our listeners to follow you and learn more about you and your company? Every Thursday, we publish an e-blast. That e-blast we have named Thundering Thursday. Every Thursday, we come up with a newsworthy article, cartoon, a little bit about the service department and the services we offer, and a very special car that we are featuring once a week, every Thursday. And to get on that list, all we need is your email address. And where do they go to, to sign up for that? Your website? They would actually send an email to info at CorvetteMike.com. There you go. I'll make sure I put a link to that on his show notes page so you can sign up and get the e-blast Thundering Thursday. Sounds like fun. And don't forget, if you're going to be in the Carmel, Monterey, Pebble Beach area, the week of Car Week to attend the 7th Annual Carmel Mission Classic, it takes place on Wednesday, August 14th at the Carmel Mission in beautiful Carmel-by-the-Sea. Check it out. For more information, go to carmelmissionclassic.org. Mike, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your enthusiasm and your experiences with the Cars Yacht listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road at the Carmel Mission Classic. Looking forward to it, Mark. Thank you. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com 
or call 866 on a plan. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.